Hey folks, welcome you all to my channel. Today I'm in another beautiful town called Alebiru. This town, I'm sure many of you would have already heard of this town. Well, for the people who have not heard of this town, this town is famous for Oisaleshwara Temple. In fact, it is also known as Alebiru Temple. The name Alebiru came into existence post Delhi Sultanates made a ransack attack on this town. They left the ruins in the city or rather in the town. That's how the name uh, Ale Bidu came into existence. Hale means old, Bidu means ruin. That's how the name Ale Bidu. The lake that you're seeing now is known as Adwara Samudra. Back in 11th century, the Rashtrakuta king Dhruva Maharaja did construct this Dwara Samudra. So in ancient scriptures, it is mentioned that the lake was giving an appearance like the never-ending ocean when it was full to the brim. That's the reason it is named as Dwara Samudra. Oisilas are originally from Malay Nadu, which is an elevated region in the Western Ghats. So, if you're wondering as to how uh, Orsalas came into power, during 12th century, uh, there were uh, wars between Western Chalukya Empire and Kalajaris of Kalyani. So, Orsalas took advantage of this internecine warfare between Western Chalukya Empire and Kal Kalajaris of Kalyani, and that's how they came into power. And in fact, during by 13th century, Orsalas actually controlled whole of Karnataka and some part, some northern part of Tamil Nadu and also western parts of Andhra and Telangana too. So well, so coming to the temple, now what you are seeing is actually a mandapam. There are two mandapams, if you see to the right there is a small mandapam, yeah that one, it's a small mandapam. To the left this one is a uh, sort of a big mandapam compared to that one. So this mandapam actually uh, hosts two shrines inside it. There is a Surya shrine and also there is a Nandi shrine. So the temple uh, ahead of this uh, uh, shrine at the Mandapa is actually Vishnuvardhana's temple. So Vishnuvardhana is actually represented as a linga under that sanctum of in the temple. If you see those two temples actually are connected through a transept. Beautiful, isn't it? This temple is actually built by the army chief staff and his name is known as Ketumala. He was the close associate of King Vishnuvardhana. He took care of this construction of this temple. Look at this beautiful star-shaped sanctum. So I'll show it in the different angle. I mean, I'll try to show that from a different angle. Sanctum. If you're wondering what happened to this uh, towers, uh, which usually be there on uh, the top of the temples, even I'm not sure of uh, those towers, the Kalasas, what we call in Canada. Right now, it looks so plain. There is a doom roof on a square plane, right? <laughs> well, uh, another interesting thing about Oisala era was they gave a lot of importance to art, architecture, and heritage, and also uh, religion too. So, and famously, they are known for their architecture. The one such beautiful architecture is, is Oisaleshwara temple itself. So well, so it was actually uh, referring to this sanctum. So this, these sanctums are a star-shaped sanctum. Okay, let me go a little further down and then show you uh, this star-shaped sanctum. Yeah, so you see, that's the sanctum. This sanctum hosts uh, King Vishnuvardhana. And uh, uh, 
they are represented in the form of uh, lingas such a beautiful temple isn't it such a beautiful structure look at the complexity of those uh, structures the all of those structures are interlockable so none of those uh, you know temple uh, were constructed using cement sand and things like that and this this whole of the temple is carved uh, on stone called a soapstone these soapstones are available uh, in two places in karnataka so one is turvekere which is in tumkur district another one uh, this uh, alebido itself these uh, would be smooth when you extract them from uh, the hearth and as the time progresses they get hardened such a beautiful temple isn't it So well, before I wind up, I I would also want to talk about uh, something called as a Garda Stamba, which is a pillar. So every king would have their personal bodyguards. Likewise, even Oyelishvara king Vishnu Vardhana II had uh, his personal bodyguards, and they were known as Garuda. So they would kill themselves the moment the master dies. So they were that loyal and that committed to the king. so all of that is there on the pillar it's all written on the pillar next time you go to the belu temple you can see that uh so for you to witness all of that you need to hire a guide please do so and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please comment if you need more videos like this in the comment section also don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like this video i request you to share this video to video with all of your friends and family thank you have a good day